4,200 trees to be cut down all in the name of solar. To be clear, we are not against solar, we are against unnecessary land use that damages ecosystems when other options are available. Approximately 4,200 Joshua trees will be removed in June to facilitate the construction of the Aratina Solar Project near Boron, California. Instead of being relocated, funds proportional to the tree's sizes will be deposited into a mitigation bank. These banks enable developers to compensate for ecological losses by financing preservation and restoration efforts in other areas. Mitigation schemes like these are a way to make developers think they aren't damaging an ecosystem. Although the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services concluded in 2023 that Joshua trees are not presently classified as an endangered species, there exist apprehensions regarding the species' ability to sustain itself over an extended period. Research conducted in 2013 uncovered that Joshua tree reproduction has halted across approximately half of the tree's natural range within Joshua Tree National Park. Predictive climate models indicate a grim outlook, suggesting that as much as 90% of the Joshua Joshua tree's habitat could become inhabitable by the turn of the century, owing that to escalating temperatures and increasingly arid conditions. Is it really worth sacrificing thousands of Joshua trees for solar energy development that prioritizes renewable energy goals over species preservation? Is this the only option? To answer that, let's take a look at nuclear in comparison to solar. To power a city of 1 million people, solar needs 188 square kilometers or 117 square miles of land, whereas nuclear power only needs 1 kilometer or 0.6 miles. The decades of nuclear fear and misinformation are contributing to the destruction of ecosystems. There is a solution, though it may be more costly. It's putting solar on rooftops, parking lots, and water canals. And before you go and type nuclear takes too long, remember that the more you build something, the faster and cheaper it gets. Japan completed several large reactors in under four years in the 1990s, and we can do it again if we put our minds to it. Another thing to think about is where will all those solar panels go after they're decommissioned? 85% of the panels are recyclable, but at the moment, only about 10% of the panels are actually recycled due to the high cost and complexity of doing so. So where do the rest of them end up? in landfills where toxic materials like lead and cadmium leak into the environment. We already know there are solutions for nuclear waste that are safe and tested. We are not against solar, but we are against unnecessary destruction of our natural environment. So let's keep putting it on buildings and over parking lots and let nature be nature, and at the same time, get good at building nuclear again.